Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for coming out to the TCM Big Screen Classic Series. From all of us at Turner Classic Movies, Paramount, and Fathom Events, we hope you're having a festive holiday season. You're here to see a special screening of perhaps the definitive classic Hollywood Christmas movie. From 1946, It's a Wonderful Life, celebrating 75 years, plus one. These days, watching It's a Wonderful Life over the holidays is an American tradition. It's like opening one present on Christmas Eve or watching nine hours of NBA games <laughs> or drinking eggnog and thinking, now I remember why we don't have eggnog on any other day. <laughs> However, It's a Wonderful Life didn't become a holiday staple until television made it so. It hardly set the movie world on fire when it premiered in December of 1946, just a little over a year after the end of World War II. It marked the return to the movies for two of Hollywood's war heroes. First, director Frank Capra, who'd spent the war serving in the Army, making documentary films for the War Department. Second, Jimmy Stewart, who'd become one of Hollywood's biggest stars in the 1930s before taking five years away from the screen to serve in the Air Force, where Stewart piloted B-24 bombers and saw serious action. Before the war, Capra and Stewart worked together on two of their biggest hits, You Can't Take It With You, and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Those films helped make Jimmy Stewart a major star. They also introduced audiences to Frank Capra's unique brand of sentimental optimism. Capra believed in telling stories about ordinary people who triumph over evil forces through their steadfast commitment to kindness, hard work, and the principles of basic democracy. These inspiring stories resonated with American audiences in the years before World War II. After the war, though, tastes had changed and audiences had become a bit more jaded, more realistic about the world they lived in. It's a Wonderful Life was not the hit Frank Capra expected it to be. However, as you know, in the years since, it has gained new generations of fans thanks to annual presentations on television. It also allowed Jimmy Stewart to move away from the stammering, aw shucks character he had perfected before the war. Sure, he has some Stewartisms here, but this is a layered, occasionally dark performance reflective of a man who had experienced the horrors of war. You're about to see impeccable performances across the board with great pacing and a script that perfectly blends humor and drama from 1946, also with Donna Reed, Lionel Barrymore, and Thomas Mitchell. It's a wonderful life. All right. Welcome back. With that final scene to yeah. make you cry, you don't have a soul. It's a wonderful life began. It's life is a short story called The Greatest Gift by Philip Van Doren Stern. He published it as a pamphlet around the holiday season and printed just 200 copies, which he sent to his friends as a Christmas card. One of those friends was his Hollywood agent, and through her, the story found its way to director Frank Capra, who bought the rights to adapt it for the screen. Capra had been looking for a property to inaugurate his independent production company, and when he read Stern's pamphlet, he called it the story I've been looking for all my life. In addition to producing and directing the film, Capra also co-wrote the screenplay with the husband and wife screenwriting team of Francis Goodrich and Albert Hackett. It's a Wonderful Life earned five Oscar nominations, including two for Capra for directing and producing a Best Picture nominee. Jimmy Stewart picked up a Best Actor nod, but he lost to Frederick March for a movie that resonated deeply with audiences at the end of World War II, Best Years of Our Lives. Thanks again for coming out. I hope you'll join us next year when our TCM Big Screen Classic Series returns. For tickets and more information, visit FathomEvents.com. For Turner Classic Movies, Paramount, and Fathom Events, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Happy Holidays, and have a great New Year.